Hi there and welcome to a video that goes through the past paper Edexcel Core 3 uh, exam questions on rational expressions. We're going all the way from 2003 up to 2010. Okay, as with all these questions, I suggest you pause the video, attempt the question, and then carefully watch how I go through it, marking your work, correcting your work, and also seeing how to properly lay out exam answers. Let's start straight away, have a go, and then I'll go through in five seconds. Okay, going through this, what's the important points to know? Firstly, we're multiplying fractions. When you multiply fractions, you do numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator. Also, with any algebraic fractions, it's always best to factorise where possible. This can be factorised, this can be factorised, and the bottom here, this denominator can be factorised, it's the difference of two squares. So let's start off by factorising everywhere where we can. So this expression here is equal to, this numerator here factorises to x subtract 3, x subtract 5. The denominator factorises to x subtract 3, x plus 3 and we've still got our multiply the top here factorizes what goes into 2x squared and 6x well 2x does and you'd have yourself x plus 3 over x minus 5 x minus 5 okay now what cancelling can we do when we times fractions top times with top and bottom times is with bottom so anything on the top will stay on the top anything on the bottom will stay on the bottom so what can we cancel that x minus 3 and that x minus 3 cancels that x plus 3 and that x plus 3 cancels that x minus 5 and one of the x minus 5 cancels we've got ourselves an answer of 2x over x subtract 5 a very straightforward four marks. Next question, pause, have a go, mark and watch after. Okay, very similar here again. I'm gonna factorize where possible. So here we go, let's have a go at this one. I'll start up here. Three x squared, I'm gonna write that as three times x times x. Notice I'm putting a dot there. I'm not using the, uh, the multiply sign like that, otherwise I might confuse x's with multiply. Now, divided by. The bottom factorises 2x and x. We've got to multiply up to 6 and then it's got to add to 7. It works out perfectly if we have x plus 3, x plus... Um, no, it wouldn't work like that actually. It would work out perfectly if we have x plus 2 here, x plus 3 here. This here, uh, multiply 7, 3 plus 2x. And on the bottom, we've got 3x to the power 5, which is 3 times x times x times x times x times x. Okay, let's cancel where possible. Now, firstly, the 3 on top here can cancel with that 3. 2 of the x's can cancel with 2 of the x's. 3 plus 2x, this here, there's a slight little trick in it. 3 plus 2x is the same as 2 plus 3x, because the order you add things doesn't matter. So these are in fact the same and can be cancelled. What are we left with? 7, x plus 2, and x times x times x. So our final answer is therefore... 7 over x plus 2, x times x times x is x cubed. We're done. Another very straightforward four marks. Next video, pause, have a go. Okay, let's go through these one part at a time on, the, on different slides. So we're going to start off by simplifying the following. Simplify the following. The way to do these is factorise numerator and denominator and cancel where possible. The denominator, do note, is the difference of two squares. 
So this factorises as follows. 3x, and you've got an x, we need to multiply to negative 2 and, and end up adding to negative 1. We're going to have a negative 2 here, and we're going to have a... In fact, we're going to have here a positive 2 there and a negative 1. All of that over x plus 1, x subtract 1. Oh look, the x subtract 1's cancel. And you're left with the answer 3x plus 2 divided by x plus 1. Again, a very straightforward three marks. The next part then. Hence or otherwise, express this as a, as a single fraction in its simplest form. Hence is probably the key word here. Hence always means use part A. What about this question is similar to part A? Well, um, we can see that we have already simplified the first part of the fraction is 3x plus 2 over x plus 1. So this here can be written more simply as 3x plus 2 over x plus 1. We're subtracting 1 over x, x plus 1. Okay? Now, we're subtracting fractions. We can only do this if the denominators are the same. So they've currently both got a factor of x plus 1 in them. The first fraction needs multiplying top and bottom by x. Okay, so it's got the same denominator. And therefore we get, on this side here, we get 3x squared plus 2x. Then we can go ahead and subtract them because they've got the same denominators. Subtract 1, all divided by x, x plus 1. And I can just take away the brackets. That's 3x squared plus 2x, subtract 1, all over x, x plus 1. And the top there, that will be factorised. We can try and factorise it. We should give it a go anyway. Does that factorise? Well, it factorises as follows. Over x, x plus 1. And oh look a factor of x plus 1 can be divided off top and bottom or can cancel and we've got ourselves the answer is equal to 3x take away 1, 3x subtract 1 all over x and we're done another three easy marks to take us up to 6 for that question okay next pause have a go Okay, we want to express this uh, sum of rational functions as a single fraction in its simplest form. Before we get underway, let's write this out in fully factorised form. You can't factorise anything about the first fraction. It's in fully factorised form. So, we're done. You're adding. Can't factorise the numerator of the second. Keep it in brackets so you know that's all part of the second fraction. But the bottom here, that's a difference of two squares. So you should note that factorises as x minus 3, x plus 3. OK, we can't add fractions until the denominators are the same. They've both got a factor of x plus 3 in them. This one needs an extra factor of x minus 3 on top and bottom. This one needs an extra factor of x plus 1 on top and bottom. So... We could multiply this one here by x minus 3 on top and bottom. And we can multiply this one here on top and bottom by x plus 1, which I might put that side. Let's throw it. And now we can go ahead and expand here. This would be x squared, subtract 3x, keep it in brackets, plus expand this out here. With a bit of luck, you get x squared plus 13x plus 12. All of that divided by each of the factors on the bottom. I'm going to write them in this way. x plus 1, x subtract 3, x plus 3. And now combine the tops. How many x squareds have we got? Well, we've got 
x squared here, and another x squared. We've got two x squared, so this would be 2x squared. We've got negative 3x plus 13x, which is plus 10x, and then we've got plus 12, all divided by x plus x plus 1, x subtract 3, x plus 3. Now you may think we're home dry now, um, but we should give an attempt at factorising even more at the end. Can we factorise this at all? Well, we could take a factor of 2 out, and we'd have x squared plus 5x plus 6, all divided by x plus 1, x subtract 3, x plus 3. Can we go any further? Well, yes, we can. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to take this working here, but you should write it going down the page. The top still factorises then. The x squared plus 5x plus 6 factorises to x plus 2, x plus 3, all divided by x plus 1, x subtract 3, x plus 3. And, oh look, some magic happens. The x plus 3's cancel, and you get yourself 2x plus 2 over x plus 1, x subtract 3. And you're done. There's your six marks. Uh, quite a lot of steps, but very straightforward if you just kept your head. Next question, pause, have a go. Okay, we are doing a subtraction here. The denominators have to be the same before we do that. But first, let's factorise where possible. It may, may make the problem slightly easier. So, the top can't be factorised anymore. The bottom, well, I could take out a 3, and I would divide out a 3, and I would get x squared minus 1. Subtract 1 over... 3x plus 1. There's nothing else I can do on the second fraction. Anything further I could factorise? Well, yes, look, the top is x plus 1 over 3. x squared minus 1 is the difference of two squares. It's x plus 1, x subtract 1. Subtract 1 over 3x plus 1. Now, oh, look what happens here, some simplification. You cancel out an x plus 1, you just get 1 on the top. So this is the same question as 1 over 3x subtract 1. Subtract 1 over 3x plus 1. Okay. Now it's time to make them have the same denominators. Uh, I need to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by 3x plus 1. So I would get 3x plus 1 over 3x subtract 1, 3x plus 1. And this one here, I need to multiply by 3 and the x minus 1. So I get subtract 3x minus 1 over the 3x minus 1, 3x plus 1. Okay, now I can go ahead and work out the top and subtract them. This would be 3x plus 1. Okay, subtract. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Keep that all in brackets there to remind you everything's got to be subtracted. 3x subtract 1, 3x plus 1. Okay, now tidy up the top. 3x take away 3x is equal to nothing. 1 subtract negative 3 is equal to 4. So we have the answer 4 over 3x subtract 1, 3x plus 1. And we're done. Next question. Pause. Have a go. Okay, factorise everything in sight. Let's start by factorising the top. What goes into 2x squared and 3x? Well, x does. And we'd have in our brackets 
2x plus 3. All divided by, let's factorise the bottom, well I can't, it's already in factors, 2x plus 3, x subtract 2. And we're subtracting 6 over, and um, this here, x squared minus x minus 2 factorises to x subtract 2, x plus 1. Right, anything come to light here, well look, the 2x plus 3's cancel. And we have ourselves the following. x over x subtract 2, subtract 6 over x subtract 2, x plus 1. Now, can't subtract fractions until the denominators are the same, so I need to multiply the first one on top and bottom by x plus 1. Okay, and then I would get myself x squared plus x subtract 6 all over x plus 1, x subtract 2. The top factorises to x plus 3, x subtract 2 all over x plus 1, x subtract 2. Oh look, some cancellation happens, the x subtract 2's cancel. And I get myself my final answer, which is x plus 3 divided by x plus 1. And I'm done. Another easy 7 marks. Next question. Pause, have a go, watch my answer. OK, let's have a look at this. Uh, just before I go into this question, just take a look here. It's telling you x can't be 0, because if, if it was, the bottom would be 0. You can't divide by 0. Similarly, x can't be 3. If it was, you'd get 9, nine take away 3 times 3, which is 0, and um, you'd be dividing by 0. Part A says express f of x in simplest form, i.e. factorise top and bottom, cancel where appropriate and then we'll do part B after. So let's just do part A separately. We're doing this in its simplest form, so f of x, let's just factorise straight away. The top factorises to x subtract 3, x plus 2. The bottom factorises to x, x subtract 3. The x subtract 3's cancel, and we get ourselves x plus 2 divided by x. And that's our simplified f of x. Okay? Next! Hence or otherwise find the exact values of f of x equals x plus 1. Key word again, hence. Forget the or otherwise. Hence. It's going to make it easier. We're solving where f of x is equal to x plus 1. We've just worked out a simple uh, ex expression for f of x. f of x is x plus 2 over x. So if we're solving f of x is equal to x plus 1, and we know what f of x is, remember, f of x is x plus 2 over x, what we're really solving is x plus 2 over x is equal to x plus 1. This is a simple equation we could solve from GCSE. Multiply both sides by x. So we get x plus 2 is equal to x squared plus x. Subtract x from both sides, subtract 2 from both sides get 0 is equal to x squared, subtract 2. Um, didn't really have to subtract the 2 actually, because now I'm going to add it back on, it doesn't really matter. So 2 is equal to x squared, and you take square roots of both sides, remembering you get a positive and negative answer. x is therefore the positive or negative square root of 2. So therefore my answer is x is root 2, or x is negative root 2. And you're done. Next question. Pause, have a go, mark. Right, part A, let's do part A. We're going to express this as a simplest fraction. As always, factorise where possible and see where you get to with that. So this must be equal to 2 over x subtract 3. Nothing we can factorise. Plus 13 over, can that be factorised? Well, yes, it's x plus 7, x subtract 3. Now, we can't add fractions until the denominators are the same. So I need to multiply top and bottom of the first fraction 
y x plus 7. Okay, and now I can multiply out and do the addition. So I get 2x plus 14 plus 13, all divided by x plus 7, x subtract 3. So I get myself 2x plus 27, all over x plus 7, multiplied by x plus 3. I'm done. That is the answer in simplest form. Now, part B says, hence solve this. Again, hence, key word. Hence means using the part above from what you know previously. Now, we've got an expression for all of this stuff here. We've got an easy expression for that. Way easier than trying to solve it equal 1. We know all of that is equal to 2x plus 27 over x plus 7, x plus 3. So instead of solving this equal to 1, we can solve the equation 2x plus 27 over x plus 7 uh, x plus 3 so it was x so that was x minus 3 so I've made a mistake there it was minus uh, above that should have been an x subtract 3 here so I'll just rub that out here that's x subtract 3 and that's equal to 1. Simple equation to solve. Do what you'd normally do. Multiply both sides by the x plus 7, x subtract 3. To remove that off the denominator, we get ourselves 2x plus 27 is equal to x plus 7, x subtract 3. 2x plus 27, expand out this bracket, must be x squared plus 4x subtract 21. Subtract the 2x off both sides, subtract the 27 off both sides, you would get yourself 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x subtract 48. Can I factorise this? Certainly can. Factorise this to x plus 8, x subtract 6, and then I therefore get answers x is equal to negative 8 or x is equal to positive 6. And I'm done. Should probably substitute those in at the end to double check you've done it right when you're checking your answers, but um, they are right. Next question, pause, have a go. Okay, this question, you've got a function, a big complicated function, 1 subtract 3 over x plus 2 plus 3 over x plus 2 squared, x can't be negative 2, otherwise you'd be dividing by 0. Show that f of x is equal to this. Really what they're asking you to do is simplify this whole set of fractions, and then there are various other parts we'll get onto. It's an 8 marker. Let's start with part A. We want to show this for f of x. Well, f of x is currently uh, 1, subtract, 3 over x plus 2, plus 3 over x plus 2 squared. Now, you can't add fractions until the denominators are the same. Now, currently, 1 is a fraction. It's 1 over 1. You just don't usually see it like that. In order to add and subtract them, they have to have the denominator x plus 2 squared. So you've got to times this one on top and bottom by x plus 2 squared. This one only needs to be multiplied by an x plus 2, because then you'll get an x plus 2 squared on the denominator. And this one is fine as it is. OK, now you can do the subtractions and additions, because they've all had the same denominator. So I'm going to expand this one out. It's x squared plus 4x plus 4. I'm going to keep that in brackets, just so I don't make any mistakes subtract what I get when I multiply out this bracket, 3x plus 6, and then add the 3. And all of that is over x plus 2, all squared. Now I can start combining things. I've only got an x squared on top, so I'm going to keep the x squared. I've got 4x subtract 3x, 
which is just 1x, and I've got 4 subtract 3, which is just 1. So I've got x squared plus x plus 1 all over x plus 2 squared, and that's my f of x. And indeed, I have done it here. It's the exact same. The one thing x can't be is negative 2, otherwise you'd be dividing by 0, and you can't do that. Right, let's move on to part b. Show that x squared plus x plus 1 is bigger than 0. Just note that x squared plus x plus 1 is the numerator of f of x. Look, it's the numerator. They're asking to show that's positive. OK, part b. How on earth do you show a quadratic is positive? Hopefully, from maybe GCSE work or your core 1, core 2 work, you might be able to think to yourself, why don't I complete the square? So why don't I complete the square for x squared plus x plus 1? How would I do that? Well, I would have an x. I know it's going to be x with something inside the bracket squared. Okay, I've got a positive sign here, so I'm going to write a positive. It's half the value of b. b is currently 1x. b is 1, so it's going to be a half. Okay, I square the half in my head and I get a quarter, I subtract that quarter, and I add on the plus one, that should have been there. So this tidies up to x plus a half, all squared, plus three quarters. Now, how does that show us that x squared plus x plus one is bigger than uh, zero for all x? Well, it's quite straightforward here, x plus a half squared is definitely bigger than zero, okay? Because it's a square number. One, anything squared is bigger than zero. And three quarters is certainly bigger than zero. It's three quarters. So therefore, this whole thing is bigger than zero. Therefore, clearly, x squared plus x plus 1, which is the sum of two things bigger than zero, must be bigger than zero. And part c, hence show that f of x is bigger than zero for all values of x. Well, we knew that f of x was equal to x squared plus x plus 1 over x plus 2 squared. I'm fairly sure from the previous slide. x plus 2 squared, yes. Well, we know by part, by part b, we know x squared plus x plus 1 is bigger than 0. And we also know that x plus 2 squared is bigger than 0. It's a square number. Therefore, f of x is bigger than 0 for all x. And we're done. Next question, pause, have a go. We want to simplify this fraction here for two easy marks. And then we're going to solve a log question. So let's simplify. Always with simplify, factorise where possible. x plus 1, x plus 3, all over the bottom factorises as x, x plus 1. Oh look, some magic happens. We didn't expect that did we? The x plus 1's cancel, and we get ourselves x plus 3 all over x. Okay? Simple. Simple two marks. Part B. Now this looks a bit tricky. We are finding the value of x for which log 2 of x squared plus 4x plus 3 subtract log 2 of x squared plus x is equal to 4. Now, couple of things that's going on in my head here. First thing is, you can't solve a log equation un uh, until everything is in the form of log of that base. This is in log base 2, this is in log base 2, we need to convert 4 to log base 2. So let's start off by doing that. Now if some people find converting to logs and bases quite difficult, I'll do a little side bit here to help you remember. This is one way if ever I got stuck, I'd go back to some number examples and this would always help me. I always remember a simple uh, indice. I remember something like 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Now, 2 here is called my base number. Okay, because it's at the bottom, it's the base. 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Now, it's easy to there say what log of base 2 the base always has to be the bottom of 8 must be then 3. Because the question that log base 2 of 8 is asking is 2 to the power of what gives you 8? 
So these two statements are the same thing. They are equivalent to each other, right? So 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8 is the same thing as log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. They mean the same thing. Because this question asks 2 to the power of what gives me 8? The answer is 3. This question asks 2 to the power of 3 is what answer? And the answer is 8. So they're the same thing. So we want to convert 4 into log base 2. So log base 2 of what, say x, is equal to 4. Now look over here. Log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. So this is equivalent to the statement. This is equivalent to the statement 2 to the power of 4 is equal to x. So x must be 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. So therefore, 4 written in log base 2 is log base 2 of 16. So let's convert all that. Therefore, log base 2 of x squared plus 4x plus 3. Actually, let me rub this out a bit over here. Um, keep that written down. That's a bit of side working. We know that it's log base 2 of 16. So, so we've got a bit more space. Log base 2 of x squared plus 4x plus 3. Subtract log base 2 of x squared plus x, we know from our work we've just done, this is the same as log base 2 of 16. Okay, now we're all in log base 2. Great, we can solve this. Now you should also remember another rule, that log a subtract log b is log a over b. So we can use that. Log base 2 of this thing minus log base 2 of this thing is simply log base 2 of x squared plus 4x plus 3 over x squared plus x and that's equal to log base 2 of 16. Okay so what? Well hopefully alarm bells are ringing x squared plus 4x plus 3 over x squared plus x I've done that in part a. Okay that's x plus 3 over x so this thing here is log base 2 of x plus 3 over x and I know that's equal to log base 2 of 16. The only way two logs to the same base can be the same is if the numbers inside the log are the same. So I can deduce from this that x over 3, x plus 3 over x, sorry, is equal to 16. Now I've got a very simple equation I could solve. Multiply both sides by x. x plus 3 is equal to 16x. Subtract x off both sides. 3 is equal to 15x. Divide both sides by 15, x is 3 over 15, which is 1 fifth, or x is 0 0.2, and you're done. And I would suggest you type that in your calculator to double check it, but it's right. And there we go, we've done what is a quite a difficult question. Okay, next one, very similar to this. Pause, have a go. Okay, let's do part A. We're going to simplify this. Let's go on to part A. Simplify this. Same old stuff. Factorise top and bottom. How does it factorise? It factorises as 2x. Uh, it would be x plus 5 and I subtract 1 all over um, x plus 5, x subtract 3. The x plus 5's cancel. Done. And we get ourselves 2x subtract 1 over x subtract 3. And that's it. We're done. So that's a very straightforward 3 marks. Harder part now. Given that ln of 2x squared plus 9x subtract 5 is equal to 1 plus ln x squared plus 2x minus 15, find x in terms of e. This is a hard question. This is quite a tricky question. But... I would hope you see 2x squared 9x minus 5, x squared plus 2x minus 15. Think back to part A. Oh, 2x squared plus 9x minus 5, x squared plus 2x minus 15, one divided by the other. That's going to be involved. And it is if we do the following. Lun means, remember what lun means, lun of a number, let's say lun of x means log base e of x. Right? Now, let's convert that. Uh, let's just write lun 
of 2x squared plus 9x subtract 5. I'm going to subtract the ln of x squared plus 2x subtract 15, and I know that's equal to 1. OK. Um, what could I do now? Well, I could, uh, I know that ln a minus ln b is ln a over b. I know ln a subtract ln b is ln a over b. So I could use that rule here. This would be ln of 2x squared plus 9x subtract 5 all over x squared plus 2x subtract 15. And I know that's equal to 1. But I've done the previous part. This hard fraction is just 2x minus 1, x minus 3 over x minus 3. So this is ln 2x minus 1 over x subtract 3 is equal to 1. OK. Now remember, uh, I could take exponentials of both sides now. That's the way I could, I could take exponentials of both sides. And I would get 2x subtract 1 over x minus 3 is equal to e to the power of 1, which is just e. Now I'm gonna, I have to find x in terms of e. I have to make x a subject. So times both sides by the x minus 3 on the bottom. 2x minus 1 would be x e subtract 3 e. Bring all the x's to the same side. Subtract x e off both sides and add 1 to both sides. So I would get 2x subtract x e is equal to 1 subtract 3 e. Factorise the x. x, 2 subtract e is equal to 1 subtract 3e and divide by the 2 subtract e and you get x is equal to 1 subtract 3e all over 2 subtract e. And that's it. You found x in terms of e and you're done. Next question and it's the last one. Pause the video, have a go and then mark your work. OK, what we're doing here is we're taking a polynomial to the power of 4 and dividing it by x squared minus 1. We're doing a long division. You could go the long division method or a shorter method I've taught. Let's do the shorter method. It's easier. I, I, I'm i dealing with 2x to the power of 4, subtract 3x to the power of uh, squared plus x plus 1. Dividing by x squared minus 1 is kind of like factorising out x squared minus 1 and working out that your quotient will be what needs to be in this bracket here. Right, what needs to go here to multiply by x squared to give me 2x to the power of 4. 2x squared, obviously. And that would give me my 2x to the power of 4, and I've totally sorted that power out. But it creates for me a negative 2x squared. I don't want negative 2x squared. I want negative 3x squared. So I'm going to have to create another negative x squared. How do I do that here? What needs going here to multiply by x squared to give me the negative x squared I want? Negative 1. And then you can close your bracket because I've gone down to the lowest power, a number. Now, that gives me the um, negative 3x squared in total I want. It also creates for me a plus 1, which is great. I wanted the plus 1. The only thing extra I need, I need an x. I don't have an x, so my remainder is plus x. And that's uh, my factorization. That's not obviously the final answer now. That's, that helps me work out what the division is. Therefore, if I divide everything I see by x squared minus 1, I would get um, 2x to the power of 4, subtract 3x squared plus x plus 1, all divided by x squared minus 1. That's equal to, therefore, my quotient is 2x squared minus 1 plus my remainder is x over x squared minus 1. Better state my a, b, c and d just to finish with. My a is the number in front of x squared is 2. My b is the number of x's which is 0 and my c is the number which is negative 1. Over here d and e, well d is clearly 1 and e is clearly 0. And I'm done. And they're all the type of questions that's ever come up on rational functions. I hope you found this useful in your revision. Thank you very much for watching.